lesson for you on creating solos. My thought processes that go into creating a solo and we're going to take some pieces of a solo that I recently did and I'm going to tell you what I was thinking about, the devices I was using, the scales and kind of what goes into creating solos. You know, there's many different ways to go about it and I'm just going to share with you um, some of the things that work for me. Sometimes I'll you know, meticulously plan out a solo. Other times I'll just kind of just go off the cuff. And often though, a lot of times I'll do both. I call it plan and jam, where I'll plan out parts of the solo and then the other parts um, just kind of let them fly and see where it takes us. The solo I played in the beginning of this video, um, I did a little bit of a planning and sketching it out and then a little bit of just improvising. And, uh, and that's what I came up with. Uh, so here's kind of the process when I first sit down and, and think about these things in creating a solo. The first thing is obviously, you know, you have to look at the chords. The chords that you're playing over are so important. That's really what's gonna give you the roadmap to what you can use solo and improvisation wise. The key is only a piece of it. So you have to look at the chords. The other thing is I wanted to think about what kind of mood I wanted to create, what kind of style that I want the solo to be in. Obviously this track I'm playing over is very hard rock, metal-esque, so it has a lot of energy, right? And bass drums, thunderous kicking in. So I wanted the solo to be have some fast parts, have some melodic parts, but also kind of um, have that energy to show through. The rhythm track is in the key of D minor, and you know, it's basically going from that D minor to the G minor. Um, so, and the chords are moving a little quick, so there's not a little, tons of time on each chord, but enough to where I wanted to kind of target certain notes in those changes to really make a strong solo statement. Just for explanation purposes, I'll explain every little bit. I might not be, you know, when I'm playing, I'm not thinking, okay, I'm gonna be playing in this mode and I'm gonna go to over here and do a bend. Obviously, it's much more organic than that. But to um, teach this and explain it, I thought I would break down a few sections of the solo. And I think this might inspire you and maybe help you in your guitar journey and creating solos. If you could pick a few things off of this and, you know, make it your own. And hey, if you got a second, please subscribe to the channel. You know, subscribing to the channel, that really helps us to keep the content coming. Put a comment in the comment box below. Let us know what type of lessons you'd like to see in the future, what kind of gear you'd like reviewed, and what you'd like to learn. And I wanted this to have a little bit more modern sound. I was playing a very modern sounding guitar. And um, so I decided to use more diatonic scales, seven note scales, than just minor pentatonic which are five note scales. So I decided to use the natural minor scale for quite a bit of the solo, D natural minor. Now let me show you a couple shapes for that scale that I was using. So off the 10th fret, low E string D, there's a great shape for natural minor or Aeolian mode. Also off the 5th fret A string root, D. So in the beginning of the solo, here's what the lick I was playing. Okay, so basically what I was doing, I was taking the B string and I was bending up a whole step to the D note, the C to the D. Bend up, let down, vibrato, but bending to that root note, that's a winner. Anytime you could bend to the to the root of the key, D minor, D note. Here. A lot of vibrato. Then I did this legato lick, all on the B string. Right? That's one pick. ended it with a half step bend again that's why I chose that natural minor scale I wanted to put a lot of these half step bends in there for melodicism right with vibrato and then the next lick so I kind of did the same thing but on the G string so I kind of repeated the first one then I go to the G string and now I'm on this half step between that E and F though. The first time I was on that between that A and B flat. Right, with a lot of vibrato and holding that bend. So they're both together sound like this. I'm 
bending whole step, bending half steps, getting these nuances in there. I'm playing some fast legato, right, in this D Aeolian mode, D natural minor. And hey, if you want to see these scales diagrammed out over the entire neck, I got a great resource for you. I could really help you with that. Click on that link in the YouTube description box and I'll send you a free video lesson and a free ebook where I diagram out like 29 scales. I teach all about modal playing. It'll tie in with this lesson really nicely. I talk about application, how to understand and apply the modes, all kinds of stuff on pentatonic scales, major and minor soloing. It's just packed soloing strategy. So, and it's all for free too. Free video lesson, free ebook. Just click on that link. The next lick I played was, was I played a little arpeggio sweep but I wanted to end on that D note because the D chord is ending and I really want to emphasize that. You really want to emphasize the root of the mode in this instance, D. So now let's take it from this D minor chord. D minor triad, which is D, F, and A. Our D minor chord. So there's a little D minor arpeggio there, right? So I swept that one pick down. But then I want to catch the high D. So it's quite a bit of a stretch. You got to stretch the D note, high D note, on that 10th fret of the high E. So you got to get a five fret stretch there if you could. And then I pulled off back to the fifth fret. So slow. Ended on that D. Quicker. So, and I slid into the. That's another technique I use a lot where I'll. I'll know the target notes I want. In this instance, I want to play this D and this C, which is part of that D natural minor scale I showed you earlier, right? So I come out of my first licks and then just slide into those notes and it kind of sounds cool and kind of looks cool. All right, now that is at the end, that is where the chord changes to the G. So what I did next was I went to G minor pentatonic and I played this lick. Ending on the G because now I'm over that G chord. I want to emphasize the G note. So I'm just, again, doing that slide technique right into G minor pentatonic. Notice is heavy vibrato again. That lots of nuance, a lot of vibrato, a lot of bending, right? Um, and that's something that lick is something I'm going to repeat later in the solo. So that's another thing I wanted to do was kind of create a sense of melody by repeating a lick or a variation of lick. And that's something you want to do often in your solos because that's how you kind of catch people, right? You catch, oh, I heard that lick, and then I heard it again, and you, and you give them that sense of melody. Now, the interesting thing about this, and I don't want to get too heady with this theory, but why this stuff works so well is that if you look at the notes in that D natural minor scale, remember the chords we're playing over, D minor, G minor. If we look at that D natural minor scale again, it's D, E, F, G, A, B flat, and C. If you look at G minor pentatonic, it's the same notes. G, B flat, C, B, and F, right? So any of those notes you're hitting technically when you go to that G chord, G minor pentatonic, it's kind of in that D natural minor scale. So it really works well. I'm emphasizing the G though. Remember I landed on that G, right? And I'm, and I'm emphasizing the G twice because I start off, right when that chord changes, I come out of that. That's a G. I land right at that on the chord change. Continue down. Continue down all the way to the low G. Okay? Um, so when you're emphasizing the root, right, of a scale, any note other than the root, you're kind of playing in a different scale, different mode. But here I'm emphasizing the G, so I kind of think of that as G minor pentatonic. All right? So if I play the whole thing so far slow... Creating a few things with the solo. I'm doing some melodic bends. 
um, kind of uh, repeating this lick, which you're going to hear later to create melody. I'm moving around the neck, getting different sounds, right? Lots of vibrato, this slide principle where I'm not just playing notes, but I'm, I'm throwing in other things to create interest. Then the next thing I played, and I switched, I believe I switched to my neck pickup for this, because a lot of times during a solo, I'll do that. I'll be playing off the, you know, in this instance, I was playing off the the back pickup, the bridge pickup, I'll switch the neck, just to give it a little different sound. And I love the sounds of neck pickups, especially on this guitar. So what I did there was I played a G minor seventh arpeggio. And it works nice because it's over the G part of the song, the G minor. And uh, I'll play that arpeggio slow. Basically, it's just a minor seventh, which is a root, flat third, fifth, and flat seventh right like a minor seventh chord i'm playing that's all an arpeggio is is the notes of a chord played separately and i started it on the f and I just repeat it it's a cool device i love that arpeggio it's two notes per string but notice when i land it okay when i get up high i play this that's a little G minor triad. And I just pull off. And I stop at the D. Because why, well, guess what? The chords change again. And then what I do is I move back up here at the D down to minor. And I land on a G note. Okay? Because again, I'm emphasizing the, the notes in the chords or the notes as they change in the chords. Um, a lot of vibrato. And then I just run right down the scale. And then what I do is I do a descending line like this. And then what I'm doing there is I'm playing the scale on one string and descending it. And that's another cool device um, because, again, I wanted to create some movement in the solo. Because I was doing this low note arpeggio thing, and, and then I did this vibrato thing, and now I wanted to kind of descend... Um, and kind of create a, a sense, play something a little flashy, right, with some speed. And again, you know, not all this was, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about it now like it's planned out like ever so perfectly, but it really isn't. You know, again, I guess the way, best way I could describe it is, you know, music is more than just, you know, the logical application of scales and modes and theory. There's a human element to it, right? And that's what we want to get across in our solos too, the emotional aspect. So it's, it's obviously more than what I'm just showing you here modes and theory and you know arpeggios and minor sevenths and stuff i'm just kind of using that for explanation purposes so you know you know what i'm talking about or what i'm doing or the process i'm going through in my crazy head this head is more than just a hat rack my friends but everybody's different and there's lots of different ways to go about it the real important things the use of melody repeating your licks varying them throughout the solo right understanding what chords you're playing on top of right and um really examining the notes and the chords and studying the relationship between chords and scales i hope you enjoyed that lesson i hope it helps you along in your guitar journey have fun with it uh remember if you get a chance please subscribe to the channel and get that ebook and free video lesson just click on that link below stay tuned for more videos more content got lots more stuff coming and remember your guitar playing is an evolution rock on